An artist followed her label's secret hit songwriting formula just to show the label that it doesn't work. Jokes on her, it became her biggest song to date doing millions of streams. Let's hear her talk about that song. Oh, but we do have to mention my song, You Plus Me. Yes. My biggest song. So what happened? I was so tired of them ignoring me and saying, yeah, just keep writing. Just keep writing. I was like, what are you looking for me to write? And I literally said this. I called uh, Aton. I was like, what are you looking for me to write? Tell me exactly what to do and I will do it. And he sends me this recording that he's not supposed to send me of Mike Karen talking about the exact formula of how to write a hit song. So I listened to it for 30 minutes and I sat down for 30 minutes and I wrote you plus me and I sent it to the label as in like, suck me off. This yeah. is the worst song ever. Fuck you. They were like, this is the best song. Mike was like, congratulations, you wrote a really good song. And unfortunately he was right. That shit gives me hundreds of thousands of streams per month. I don't know what it is. I, I do love it. I do. It's a great song, but I would have never ever wrote it unless I had been trying to follow this formula that Mike made. All right, let's stop it here first and foremost, right? Obviously, I love, I love like it. everybody, mm -hmm. I would love to hear this formula as well. Why? Because she just said, I listened to it for 30 minutes, and then I spent 30 minutes writing a song, and then basically I came here we are. Yeah. with a popping song, right? 30 minutes, that's a YouTube video. Yeah, that's a lot. This if would I... be the greatest video, YouTube video of all time if we could put this, like we find this recording and we leak it. Yeah, that's what I thought she was talking about. Bro. I thought maybe she found like a like a, a TED talk or some shit that Mike <laughs> did and she picked it up from that. I just pieced together that she actually talked to him. She, she, she actually listened to the recording. It was given to her by somebody that was related. Anton, apparently, which this is kind of like snitching low key because she said he wasn't supposed to give it to her, but I don't know, right? But... All right, let's let's get into the details. One, formulas. Artists hate formulas. They do. She herself said, I was not even really trying to create a hit. I thought this was going to be horrible. And then, oh boy, this is a great song, right? Yeah. People loved it. Yeah. Not just the label, but the audience. And more importantly, and this is the part that we can get deep in, she said, it is a good song. She She wrote it from a place of angst, kind of. Right, a little and, hate, you know, and and you, hate, you know? but then I guess as she listened to it over time, like, dang, you know what? That is a good song. I can't even be, I can't hate on myself. Yeah, <laughs> right? and or, I, you know, to your point, we don't know what the formula is, but I'm willing to bet you a part of it is like, hey, let's put something simple in it that can get so ingrained in your your inner psyche that you eventually grow to like it, whether or not you don't like. I'm I'm willing to bet money that's in there. That's definitely part of it <laughs> because we have listened to the song. You plus me, and I've said I've sang you plus me multiple times. Yeah, that's all you need. You plus me. What's the rest of it? Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. But that's the know, point. Equals, that's the... <laughs> you plus me equals, and then she'll say one thing, and then the second time she says something different. So <laughs> equals something different every single time. Yeah, that's catchy. That's something that I can plug and play. We should listen to the song and really try to break down and guess the formula. We'll like end the video with that. But there's some other elements okay. that, that we need to talk about here. Because, again, what I think a lot of artists miss is the same thing that got missed the last time we did a video on a formula. Because there's not just one formula for success, mm -hmm. right? So let's be clear about that. We don't believe there's just one formula for success. However, there are formulas that improve success. And there's formulas that exist where you can at least learn something from this formula. Right? It's like if I'm not a violinist or I don't want to be a violinist, me learning how to play violin is going to teach me things mm. that I could apply to something else and still improve my overall artistry. Right. And I want to play real quick the last time from Rance 1500 where he talks about the controversial formula that went viral last time. Every time when I work with artists, I'll, I'll challenge them and say, hey, let's and write a song with 40 or 50 words or less. I did it with Coyle Ray. I just did it with Sweet. I did it with everybody. Like, it's a challenge. Write a song in 40 so words or less. More importantly, people missed this part. He said, it's a challenge. People took it so literally like a song has to be 40 words or less just to be a hit. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. It was more so the challenge of simplifying and refining and being a creative challenge. It's like, oh boy, use your creativity. 
why is that a hard thing for artists to swallow sometimes? It's like he's not yeah. saying don't be creative. Yeah. This actually make, forces you to be more creative. How do you write a great song in less than 40? And it's an exercise. It's a challenge. That's what he was saying, right? Yeah. Which I think of any formula you try to copy will force you to do that. Yeah, I mean, and to his point, it's not even a sentiment that's only echoed in music. Like, I've taken business classes and public speaking classes where they're like, hey, if you have something that you can say in 100 words, cool, cut it down to 50, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you need to be more concise. You only have so much time to get people's attention, and a lot of people aren't going to stick around to hear word number 98, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes <laughs> that's the case. And what I... I think that video taught me a lot about what I think the disconnect between artists and the formulas are. I think artists hurt themselves because they want people to be way more complicated <laughs> than they really are, right? Yeah. It's like, we're used to thinking artists are complicated. That's kind of that's kind of y'all whole shtick, you know what I'm saying? Being overly complicated is individuals. Shtick. They're not as complicated as they are. Yeah, y'all definitely are. Yeah, they definitely complicate not. things, but they're not as complicated. Yeah, 100% not. And then it's like, you get mad at the receiver of the art for not being as complex as you are. It's like, bro, we're not thinking about it as deeply as you are. I like the yeah. song. I don't like the song. I like the melody. I don't like the melody. I like this one bar you said. I don't like this one bar you said. That's, a, that's about as deep as the average music consumer gets into it. Right. And so what's crazy about the formulas is I feel like if we replace it with a different word, they will understand it. The word. Recipe. That's all it is, bro. Formula is a recipe. If you give me a chili recipe and you're like, hey, bro, I got this fire chili. The kids love it. The wife love it. Every time I serve it for guests, they just, they just go crazy. And I go like, all right, cool, but Sean, you don't put jalapenos in your chili. I like jalapenos in my chili. Like, me adding jalapenos doesn't necessarily take away from the form, the recipe. The I core can, recipe. I can, yeah, yeah. It's the core recipe, right? I can still add my little sauce to it, but it would be crazy of me to say that, hey, Sean, your chili recipe Nah, it ain't for me. I want to make my own chili. It's like, why, wow, bro? I just gave you the sauce for great chili, bro. Like, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, add your jalapenos in, but follow this recipe. <laughs> and I feel like that's what she did. Because, like, you know, like I said, to your point, I wish we could know what the formula was or get deeper into it. But I'm willing to bet she probably didn't follow it 100% of the way. Maybe, like, 98% and she added a little bit of her flair into it. But it's, she's still following a formula, still following a recipe and finding a way to add herself into it and, you know. Look at what she got. <laughs> and, and for those who don't know, who is Mike Karen, the guy behind this formula? Oh, yeah. Because I've heard this for years, actually, about Mike Karen. Yeah. That he has these formulas. He has, a, like, Joe Budden one time was like, say he had, like, a book or something that mm -hmm. you go into and you'll put some artists in the studio and mm -hmm. create these hits, right? So he knows how to create a hit factory. And Mike Karen is not an artist, you know, maybe traditionally, yeah. right? He might be an artist in background, but his role in the industry is not an artist, which is just a reminder. Artists, the people who creating them are creating the music aren't the only ones who have a say or understand how to create great music, right? So let's put that out there. <laughs> One, who is Mike Karen though? Mike Karen is the CEO of the music publishing company, Artist Publishing Company. APG. All right. APG, huge. It's funny, when I hear Artist Publishing Company, it doesn't connect as big as HPG because I always hear APG. Yeah. He also is a A and R at Warner. Uh, he is the co-president of Atlantic Records. Produced Beyonce and Kanye. I don't know what are those producer credit. What kind of producer credits that are? Yeah, I think he does have a producer background. I'm pretty sure that like, that might be where he got to start. Which I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't. I still have not done my Mike Karen deep dive to be honest, but. Like, he's in a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This man's done some stuff. Yeah, man. Right. Mike, Mike Karen is definitely a, a, a music industry OG, man. A savant. Go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's a savant. <laughs> Hate him or love right. him, man. The man, on, the man on put some points on the board. Like, <laughs> and there's a formula that exists. So this person right here said, yo, I never listened to her before this. She just heard, They just heard this clip, and they said, let me go check her out. I was missing out. Super talent and great music, right? The first song they probably started with was mm -hmm. You Plus Me, because that's the first song. It's at the top, right? That's why Mike is Mike. Two of my faves, Lincoln, I love this. Yeah, Mike definitely knows what he's talking about and doing. This is another person, looks like they're in the industry. I need that 30 minute talk. Like you see all these different clips. We hate to interrupt your regularly scheduled podcast, but my man, Brand Man Shine, got something he's just been dying to say to y'all. Go ahead, Brand. We're looking for a hundred of y'all, a hundred artists who could be at our next event on October 15th. We're doing another one. Those of y'all who know that we did this one other time, we have helped artists go from zero to 
millions of streams in 90 days. And we have artists who are at the first event who are already getting millions of streams. We're looking to help more artists. We want to hear your music. We want to meet you in person. We want to commune. This isn't some just get some education and keep moving. We want to chop it up, dap it up, take some pictures, and hopefully build a relationship with you in the long term. But the last few details, Ja'Cory, can you go ahead and let them know where it is, time, all that good stuff? Yeah, yeah I got you. I got you. So if you want to commune, you want to you want to learn, then meet us in Washington, D.C. on October 15th at 1230. But once again, we'll be meeting with 100 of you. You know what I'm saying? Got to be real strict on that. 100 people, not 101, not 102. If you want to make sure that you're one of those 100 people, click the link in the description or go to nolabelsnecessary.com slash D.C. to get your ticket. And yeah, hopefully we see you there and we see some shit shaped. www.nolabelsnecessary.com. Remember, we sold out real fast last real time. Fast. We'll probably do it again. See you there. Let's play the John Mayer clip that actually alludes to a lot of what she went through process wise in following a formula. And again, the value artist of following these formulas, even if it's not what you're going to do for every single song. Now I'm actually at the point where I'm going, why do I need to like what I'm writing? What if I can write things that I don't even like at the moment? But, that but then I'm what would be the write? point? If you don't like it, it's because it just exists a little bit beyond your own tastes for that moment. But if you don't like it and it's a hit, then you're going to be stuck. No, you begin the... to like it. Oh, okay. Like that's what happens as a writer. You write something and go, I bet this isn't any good, but your tastes catch up to it. So now I'm going, I know it's a very complex kind of twisted thought, but right. why does my liking my idea have to stop me from writing the idea? Right, right. Maybe, maybe what you like and don't like it right can... now is not essential. It's a lot of things actually that are clicking now that I didn't think about when we first saw this clip because one, he's alluding to what Kill um, Boy went through in terms of I'm writing this idea, I'm executing it, and I'm just performing an exercise. That's what he said, basically, mm -hmm. right? Like, why do I have to like it to write it? So let me play it one more time. I'm actually at the point where I'm going, why do I need to like what I'm writing? What if I can write things that I don't even like at the moment? What if I don't have to, what if I can write things that I don't even like at the moment and it might be ahead of my taste, basically? Mm -hmm. if, if my taste catches up to it, that means two things, artists. Y'all don't just have the ability to be ahead of other people and their taste. You have uh, the ability to be ahead of your own be taste. Be ahead of yourself. Right? That's crazy. And some thing, sometimes you might actually hinder your own progress as an artist by liking it as you in the current moment. Yeah. And that's probably where writer's block comes a lot of times. I'm trying to only write things that I currently love the taste of instead of just writing. And, you know, a lot of times if you're writing a paper, if you're writing a song and you just write, they'll, they'll say like, no, just go down and write. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just start writing mm -hmm. because it prevents that writer's block and that sense of perfection that can stop that growth. So like when you combine that with the fact that there's some formulas that exist that kind of get you out your own head, yep. you follow the formula yep. to find new spaces, and the fact that you do not have to like it in the moment, you likely will catch up because it's coming from you still too, right? It's, just, it's probably hard to write songs that you completely hate yeah. that come from you. Yeah. You know, if, if you do, then there's probably some therapy or something needed. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> So all of these are really connected, and it, these have just popped up between Rants, fifteen hundred, uh, Kill um, Boy, and and John Mayer. The, this theme is starting to develop over our last what three, yeah, a couple five episodes. Of, yeah, I mean, I, I like it because it keeps enforcing the point. That I, I love hearing, and I, I want artists to take it in. And that's that sometimes, a lot of times, even you're wrong, and it's okay because yeah. you can be wrong and, and still be wrong on your way to a hit. You know, and I think. To your point earlier, right, when you mentioned Mike, like, we know Mike has a creative background, but, you know, we don't know if he actively stays in that world. But it's like, I think sometimes artists see see only themselves as the as the people that are able to um, put these things together, right? Put, put these bodies of work together that people would like. But what I don't think they often think about is like, a lot of artists are selfish, man. Like, they, they tend to create what they enjoy. They pay attention to what they enjoy, what they like. If you're on a label or even have a team around you, there are all these people that are paying a lot more attention to what people think and people enjoy than you, than you might be paying attention to. So even though you can make the argument, hey, you don't create, you don't know, it's like, mm, that's not true. Like, I'm I'm the one that, you know, maybe to Mike's point, I, you know, I've been in 
thousands of songwriting sessions. I've literally yeah. been able to see what this formula can create for hundreds, if not thousands of views. You know, you take it to a marketer, like, hey, bro, like, I'm literally the one reading the comments and what the people are saying. I'm the one looking at the data. Like, I'm the one gauging the feedback on these things. You're just going to create. I am working on systematizing and creating a formula for what you create. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which, going back to the earlier point, artists hate formulas. They feel like it puts them in a box. But formulas exist for a reason. You know what I'm saying? It's the same reason. McDonald's make the same double cheeseburger uh, formula every McDonald's across the nation, man. Say, no, this shit... Eight times out of ten gonna hit, no matter who come in this bitch. <laughs> yeah. and that's why you have your very perfect example that I like, like to use over and over again. There's one artist that signifies so many of the things that artists fight against, even though that artist is held up high on a pedestal by artists at the same time. Lil Yachty. Kanye West, sir. Oh, okay, gotcha. Kanye gotcha. West. I was, in the, I, was in the, I was in the same ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were talking this Lil Yachty, bro. We gotta get a little Yachty here. Anytime we talk about songwriting, man, we gotta get a little Yachty here. Kanye West. Let me, t- <laughs> let me tell you about Kanye West, bro. Do not us, bump us, do music artists and other artists not hold Kanye West on a pedestal in yeah. terms of his ability as an artist? Yes, right? yes, definitely. All right. All right. People hold Kanye in high regard as an artist. I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah, he's consistently <laughs> known for taking formulas. Yep. For lack of better words. He will go learn something somewhere else. And he is an avid student, which is what makes him a great artist. As big his ego is, he does go through student work over and over again. Yep. Learns those formulas, ways of thinking, collects those frameworks, puts it in his own work, and then comes out with something greater over and over again. Yep. As a matter of fact, Kanye is like Captain Planet, bro. Okay, okay. I think, I think I might see where you're going with that. Well, walk me through it. Your powers combined, <laughs> I am Captain Planet. <laughs> I take the earth, the the water, or whatever. I'm taking all these elements. I got Virgil up under me. I got all these other people that I can learn from, and I want the best from all of y'all. And y'all create a me. Okay, yeah. That's what he does. I agree with that yeah. over and over again. <laughs> And that's the hero version of it. If it was a super villain, he would be the one who sucks up all your powers and then just becomes the bigger and bigger he'd be, villain. Uh, he'd be one for all. And all for one. No, see, see the, the way you responded to me lets me know you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, I responded to you specifically because <laughs> I knew that was not exactly what you wanted. I know what it alludes to. But it's funny because <laughs> there's an all for one in what I'm talking about. So that makes it that makes it even funnier, actually. <laughs> Because they were trolling when they created it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It's like, people troll just like they do in Disney movies. And you see adult <laughs> jokes. They're like, no way these niggas are going to eat this stupid shit up, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Oh, my God. I didn't expect the, I didn't expect the disrespect <laughs> to come in off a friendly reference. <laughs> <laughs> but but you do make a good point. Like a lot of the best artists, you know, you think your Michaels, your Kanye's, mm-hmm. your, your Beyonce's, your, your Quincy's. These are all people that were, to your point, perfectly fine with altering formulas. Let me learn the formula first, and then figure out how to add my own spin on top yes. of it. And were perfectly fine with listening to advisors around them who may have been telling them like, "Hey, like I know you the creator, you, know? you Michael, you sing, you dance, you do, but yo, I'm Quincy, bro. I'm, I'm getting mm-hmm. a different vision." Out here, you know what I'm saying? L- listen to me. Like, let's, 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 let's do some good right. shit together. So, it's two sides of it, right? Smart enough to, to follow the formula until they didn't need to anymore. Smart enough to listen to people pitching them formulas to yes. try to follow. Individually. Like, artists create this perception of the individual artist in a room alone creating an expe- expression that's only of them, not affected by the outside world. But all of the greatest artists, you mentioned the Kanye and mm-hmm. those that you also talked about, they are taking these respective, absorbing from others, taking these formulas that do exist, and then they create a higher vision that connects with more people, and then we hold it in high regard. Anybody, all the masters have gone through a process of learning the formulas, like mm-hmm. a Picasso, right? We regard him better than somebody outside of marketing. We regard them and then recognize their talent greater than like a maybe five-year-old that might make a similar looking image because we knew they went through the process of learning technique first. And then at some point after having techniques in the formulas, now you can say, well, I know he can do this. 
So the fact that he made it look like this must be intentional. Yeah. Versus a third grader, it's like it was just done like that. Yeah. Right? So yeah. now you can't even <laughs> create any idea of value from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I get so, what you're saying. So <laughs> like artists, again, bro, like if one of your goats is a is Captain Planet, which there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? I wonder how many don't even know who Captain Planet is. That's true. Bruh, I just talked to an artist recently. I hope you're watching. And I was trying to make a reference to the music and I compared what Afrobeats is doing now to like the Caribbean invasion, what happened with reggae music in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what I'm talking about, right? He was like, nah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, like Sean Paul? He was like, who that? Like, then, <laughs> I, then I was like, oh, all right, bro, let me, let me just play a song. You don't know the music. I give it right temperature. No, I don't know that. Just give me the light. I'm like, golly, bro. Hey, this this moment in my life has 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 arrived because he was old. somebody that you would think would know it. That's the worst part about it. You know what I mean? Like you would almost just look at it like, oh, this is my little brother. Like yeah. we from the? No, we not, man. Yeah. So anyway, outside of us being older <laughs> than we we, we thought, um, <laughs> let's think, let's try to break down this formula. Uh, we're gonna listen, take a, a moment, and then we're gonna give y'all our thoughts of we, what we think makes this formula. Uh, this make the formula. chili. All right, so we broke down the formula, and there's a lot of different elements that we took note of, and we're gonna have to do a whole nother video on that sometime. But I just want to talk about five of the elements that we noticed that we think actually apply. All yeah. right, yeah, we, yeah. we think that it's something there, and we want to know what y'all think. But the first element which is actually a glaring, strong, maybe smoking gun, that this has to be a part of the formula, is the hook. It's actually most of the song. Mm -hmm. Like half of it. It has more emphasis. Basically half of the song. So this, the hook is 28 seconds long, and there's three hooks that play, which is 84 seconds, right? Almost a minute and a half. The entire song itself is two minutes and 43 seconds long. Two minutes and 43 seconds. Crazy. It's right? on the hook. So just about half the song is left after you get rid of hook. But guess what? All of that is in verse. The other half isn't just verse. You have 13 seconds that play but um of just beat. Mm-hmm. All right. There's a couple of like mini bridges in it. So when you're talking about the amount of time spent on verse, uh, what was it? I think we got 53 seconds total on verse. Of a two minute and, and forty three second song. Yeah, man. To the to the ranch's point earlier, man. Most of the focus is on the part of the song with the least amount of words. You know, most of the focus. Yep. So even if the whole song doesn't only have forty words, that's interesting. Most of the focus still being on the part that has the least words and simplicity. Yep. There might be something to that there. There might be something to that there. Let's just get a sheer percentage too. So numbers wise, verse is only twenty three percent of the song. 23%. Chorus, almost 50%. Yep. Makes sense. It's a big gap there. All right? So we touched on basically two, the hook being the majority and verse being the minority within the remainder of the song. That's an interesting note. Now, another thing is breaking the monotony. All right? Because if you're going to have a song that has so much chorus, so much repetition, which is technically another sub element. Mm-hmm. So you, if a song has so much repetition and it's going to introduce this chorus over and over again, something that was really cool in this song is they didn't just say the exact same chorus over and over again. They spiced it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Corey, you want to drop the bars of the verse? You plus me equals movies in my head and in my dreams. It's the freak show. And then she switches it up, right? Second time when she repeats it. Oh, you plus me equals I don't know what it's about to lead. It's a free throw, right? So she lets us know where it leads in both times. It's a bar, actually. It's a bar, yeah. It's definitely a bar. And, and I, I didn't do it justice in my, my my poetic reading, but if you listen to it, she's switching the tonality up of the lyrics. There's points where like different ad libs drop in. There's different effects that kind of come in on top of her switching the words up. So to your point, right? It's like, hey, we're gonna focus on half of the song being just these lines, and we got to make the this specific session. Um, not boring pretty much, you know, mm-hmm. got to make sure that's something that kind of breaks their, their, their listening pattern, you know, reminds them that they're right, listening to right. some shit. If you're going to repeat something that you do again, or I guess I think about it like this, like 
if we know to have a hit song, we're going to have to repeat the same elements. You want to repeat, but don't be repetitive. Yeah, exactly. It's like, how can we make this thing that they're going to hear a hundred times over sound different when they, sound when different, they hear like it? Like you yeah. said, and that goes tone, maybe change up a, a word or two, and maybe what? Energy. Change the beat or energy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There. All right, there we go. Now, those that's just some of the switch up. We're breaking the monotony. Again, there's many ways you can break the monotony. You don't even have to use all of those different elements that we just mentioned. Maybe you just switch the beat drastically, and that's enough. You don't have to change lyrics. But breaking your monotony, pretty sure that's probably a part of this. All right? And then another thing is the classic build up with a beat drop. Yep. All right? Started low, came in, bam, a beat drop. That's always gonna it's gonna do something. Yeah. Right now, it doesn't mean a song's gonna work just because you do these things. You could probably find songs that are duds that have some of these elements in it. Yeah, but it's nice. You know, it lets us the audience know that something is coming, man. This something. this this is building up to something. Right. But it's nice to have that build up for sure. And then a big thing for me was the song starting quickly. We'll get deeper when we break this whole thing down in a separate video, because I think we should definitely do that. But like literally Three, four seconds in, she's like starting. It's her verse, but mm -hmm. it starts so quickly that you feel you feel like the song. No, you you automatically can begin to be hooked by the words in the verse. Yeah, I was gonna say that it's almost like a like a TikTok hook, right? Yes. Like I'm, I'm giving you, I'm not giving you enough time to scroll away. You know what I'm saying? Not giving you enough time <laughs> to scroll away. Perfect. That's a perfect way to think about it because it's all attention. Whether you keep playing the song, they say. Right, a song doesn't count as a stream until it plays for thirty seconds. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, why don't they count it to thirty seconds? Because people could just be clicking around. Someone could click your song by mistake. They might not have really been streaming it. But once they made a long enough decision to continue to give you attention, now we can count it as a stream, and now you can get paid. So how do you keep them hooked for at least thirty seconds? Maybe that back half of that song is trash, but could you at least keep them for thirty? <laughs> can you at least give them the thirty-one seconds. In? All right. You know, maybe that guy <laughs> that you owe a verse. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, bro, be the second verse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, he, I, I owe you a verse, but you really ain't that good. You know, that, that's how they position some of this. And then as a bonus, because, again, we're going to break down some of these other elements later. And there's a special video I want to play that we're going to play in real time of somebody else talking about this exact same formula from Mike Karen. But I think another element, at least topically, that he might have mentioned is no. But I think there's probably a topic element in this breakdown of this formula. He probably has like five different topics. 100%. A part of it. Because be. I was thinking about the relationship theme yep. here. Right? And I know relationship stuff goes viral. Even early, before like I was as deep in the music as I was now and things start, first started to move, I was like, man, at some point when I get to where I want in music, I'm going to start a relationship channel. I wasn't going to be in it. It was just going to now mitigate those topics, have people talk about it, meet up, and da-da-da. And now, so many pages exist that have exactly that. Why? Because it's so easy to say, hey, talk about women or talk about men mm -hmm. and get other everybody else to engage. Yeah. We know it happens over and over again. So relationship, I'm sure there's other things that he's already marked out that are something that you want to talk about. Yeah. I think we've talked about it before, too. I thought it was an old episode where it's at least like four or five things. If you really pay attention to music, it always covers one of those bases. Probably. Love, relationship, heartbreak, money, being up, being down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Probably the same things that you see in movies. You know, so some kind of draw between the two. So yeah. we can yeah. definitely add that note for when we do the episode. And yet what's crazy is there's like maybe two subliminals before we leave the whole the whole subject of this song in particular. So Josh noted the part that sticks out in the song is you plus me. Yeah. Right? And that might allude to the fact that she's following a formula. And remember, she hated this in the yeah. beginning. So maybe she was low-key trying to throw them a sub. She did say she was trying to be funny about it. Right. You know she was saying? trying to be funny yeah. about it. So maybe she alludes to the formula. And then the other sub, you know what the other sub is? I can't get this bitch out of my head? Yes. Okay. She's telling you you can't get it out your head yeah. while you can't get it out your head. And I thought about that because you were just singing it. Yeah, well, we ain't, we ain't gonna keep that part in it either, you know. Oh, uh, we don't have to, but, <laughs> but we may. You know what I mean? We may. <laughs> or maybe we'll play it literally right here. We'll do it like a nice little repeat. <laughs> right, I thought we just play that random parts of the video. Just loop it for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
So those are the elements. And now I want to, like, let's get into this video. All right. So I want to give a reminder that being independent, is not just about not being signed to a label. It's actually making money without being signed to a label, being able to have a sustainable career. And for those of y'all who actually want to be able to make money from your fan base, you're serious about figuring out how to monetize. I have a free video that you can check out. I don't need your email. I don't need your phone number. I don't need any information. All you have to do is go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. And I'm going to show you the lies that artists have been told that have been keeping them, probably you too, from monetizing your fan base and how shifting that perspective has allowed one artist we're working with to be on track to make over $500,000 this year. This is a different era. Don't fall for that trap saying artists can't make money. Artists do not have to be broke. So if you want to escape that trap, go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You do have to make sure you put the www in the beginning when you type it in your URL and watch this free video again. You're not going to be asked to put in your email. You're not going to be asked for your phone number, but it won't be up forever. Check it out. Yo, I actually haven't watched this video yet, but I know I saw it back in the day, but I cannot remember a word from it. But they're talking about this formula. This is Joe Budden and... Hitmaker, which is still throwing me off because I still think of him as Youngberg, but they're talking about it on a show called Everyday Struggle, RIP to Everyday Struggle. Let's see what happens in this conversation. Mike Karen. Let me get to the shits with you. Mike Karen has his own ways of making records. I didn't abide by the Mike Karen rules because I'm super duper creative. Like, and like, I just don't allow people to tell me what the f to do. So this formula does contradict the minds of super creatives because I'm, I'm just amazed at how super creative people continue to sit in the seat yeah, and tell me that there's a formula. Yes, it, yes. You guys, it, no, 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 y'all are look, not that stupid. Bro, listen, everybody that has been submissive to Mike Karen and does what Mike Karen wants to do is a multimillionaire. That's not my question. Shit, that is the question at the end of the day. No, my only question. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you put I think all you got to make a note. One, this is yet another person basically saying, I'm not gonna follow or I wanna resist. But he also is acknowledging yeah, that it works work. at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And I think that's where you're gonna get the purest, um, you know, and most credible feedback. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, I don't like this, he's showing resistance, but he's also acknowledging that that it works yeah. at the same time. Yeah. The only question that involves Mike Karen today is about this hit formula. I like to see where other creators fall on this. And you telling me that everybody has worked with Mike Karen has made a shitload of money. It's not really answering my question. Can you tell us anything about this formula? Like this is the real So shit. Pinky can get a hit from the book. What he's saying is the music works. That's what he's trying to say, not just like directly tying the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're not getting these yeah. millions unless people are listening to it and liking the song. And actually like it. Yeah. yeah. This is the real so shit. So Pinky can get a hit from the book. No, no, no. This is the real shit. Let me just be honest and Mike, don't kill me. Find out the honesty. He put every hot motherfucker that's on a come up in one studio. And you're in A, you're in B, you're in C. You do have the rules. We're all writing to <laughs> one B. He can take all those ideas and twist it and make it what it wants to be. Like we're all writing to the same beat. Every person that is writing to one beat. Does to make he it pick the hit? Hey. Huh? Does he pick the hit then? Yeah, he picks it. Huh? Sit down. And, 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 and the <laughs> developed idea that becomes. What all right. Goes so in look, the book? Here, here's a, here's another example. When Fast and Furious happened before Tory Lanez popped off and all the other. Me, T-Pain, Tory Lanez, everybody was on a chartered bus to watch the Fast and Furious movie and they brought us back to the studio and we all sat in the studio in a room and made the records. See, I don't understand this though, right? Because this sounds like, yo, like one, I'm inspiring y'all. I just put y'all on a bus, watch the movie. While y'all are inspired, go on a high. It's no different than somebody saying, I'm I'm on a walk. I just watched a, 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 a songwriter artist say, I uh, I go on walks and then I'm making music. Actually, it wasn't a songwriter. It was Johnny Cash. He was talking about it. Mm -hmm. and he said writing a, a hit, writing songs are, are is like this magical thing, right? I can't just say I'm gonna go write a song, but if I say I'm gonna go on a walk, I'll end up writing a song. It was something like that, yeah. Right? Like you have to do something. He was basically alluding that you get an experience and then you get inspired, right? So he gave them an experience of listening to the music. And then, I mean, listen to the movie. Watch, watch the, the movie, movie, yeah. And then while y'all are inspired, that's in you. He wants you to write something that directly connects. I don't see that as something 
crazy super magical or or like anti-creative that's the most important part of all this like yeah and, and what the other part hold up real quick it's just competition yes competition and mitigating your risk of getting a trash song yeah just more shots up on the board all y'all around this same song yeah somebody gonna give me a hit <laughs> yeah which one of these are better like i think i know sometimes creators don't like a competitive Age. And I'm sure maybe there's more things that they're not talking about here, but like everything that I, I'm hearing specifically here is like above board, but which is cool, which is probably why Mike Karen is Mike Karen, you know what I mean? Um, is we were just talking about what Killboy said that alluded more about, um, alluded more to how to write a song. She wasn't in this process yeah. that Hitmaker is talking about. So that means he has his own formulaic way of writing a hit right in terms of like how you could do it individually the core elements and structuring probably but he also has ways to execute writing a hit mm-hmm. which is interesting too right it's yeah. like i'm gonna put y'all in the room then i saw so, i mean look to me bro sounds like a genius for one yeah exactly. i'll leave it at that i mean i look at it more like he has a formula for drawing a hit out of people because see your point about the competitive the better way to say the competitive it. nature is like if you're a songwriter and you're pitching songs, you know that you're competing with other songwriters, but it's one thing for you to be in a room and be able to see your competition, right? You dap their competition up. Y'all had lunch together 10 minutes ago, and then boom, y'all get broken off in sessions. You know, only one of y'all getting picked, more than likely. You know, like that's a, that brings a completely different energy to the, to the landscape. But let's leave the video at this. We've already gone long enough. Hopefully y'all like this video. If y'all have any feedback, how do, let us know. How do y'all think this works? Do you think that there's a specific formula that can at least improve the chances for a hit? Not should you do it or not. Like, don't give us all that argument. What's good and bad, the, the, whatever. They're going to do like, it. What do y'all, of course they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Let us know what y'all think in terms of the formula. Have y'all noticed any other formulas or elements and things that you can do? You know, write it down in your comments. Actually go listen to the song and tell us what you think the formula to the song is. Other than that, this is yet another video. I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. We out. Peace. Wow, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And if you like this clip, you can listen to the full episode on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you stream your podcasts. But if you want to keep watching, we've placed a video that will be so useful for you conveniently above. Go ahead and click that link and watch it.